Isn't it beautiful that even when there's few of us, we raise our voices so powerfully to worship our God. I um, am keen to do a series sometime this year on worship Um, because worship is something that ought to be a lifestyle as well. So, okay, are we on? We are on. Okay, so we are continuing our Grateful Living series. Um, As we mentioned the last few times, we've already done three. um, And the Grateful Living series are to help us to live more abundantly to impact the world for God. And so a grateful living God gives so that we can give. And in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8, it tells us, And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things and at all times, having all that you need will abound in every good work. Our God is a great God and he wants everything to the fullest or as should I say it's more that he deserves everything to the fullest from us the grateful living messages come of course under the category of stewardship and stewardship means managing the things that God gives us and by managing the all that God gives us we can live more abundantly so that we can impact the world for the glory of God what God has done for us is not to be kept to us or for us he wants us to impact the world that is what mission is all about it is about souls for god's kingdom we know we're passing through this earth it's not our home what's that song this world is not my home i'm just a passing through and so our focus ought to be heaven and so faithful stewardship the foundation of it is love And one of the PowerPoints that I had earlier is that it's not money, it's love is the foundation of faithful stewardship. And so we are to love God and people with everything. When I started doing door knocking many years ago, now going going back just over 20 years ago, my, my team leader that was training me at the time that said to me, it's not about the sales, it's not about book selling, you are to love God and to love people and then that will outflow with what and how you relate with people and God is a God of relationships and so he is and a God of love and he wants us to reflect the same to love him and to love people and so the first three we've already covered time talents and testimony and what we covered on time was one of the thing key areas that we looked at was the wise use of time reflects our priorities where are your priorities where are my priorities do you start do you start your day with God or do you just get into the busyness of the day so devotions is one of the important things uh, uh, in prioritizing Sabbath how do you spend your Sabbath what do you do in that space Keith and I have just recently started, it was beautiful to do this last night, but we've actually decided that to help us to not rush into Sabbath and even miss the opening of Sabbath and having that special prayer time with God, we are now also lighting candles as we actually open Sabbath. But it was just beautiful to sit there for a little while last night and actually sing a couple of songs as Sabbath was coming in. What do you do? to bring in your Sabbath? What do you do in spending time with God over Sabbath? Family, friends and service, all of those are important as well. Then we looked at talents. Talents used are talents multiplied. Your talents, my talents given to us, knowing that talents can also be learned or should I say even we can grow within those spaces as well. But the thing is that our talents have been given to us by God. What are you doing to multiply those talents and to share them with others? Testimony is the one we covered last time. And our testimony, which is our story of what was our life like before God in our life, what is our life now that we've accepted Jesus into our lives, and what is the difference? That is your testimony. And your testimony ought not just to be shared with people, but it ought to be lived. It's who we are 
what's that quote? That people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care and that is shown by the way that you live. Who are you rubbing shoulders with and how are you relating to other people? So our testimony must be spoken and lived. One without the other has little impact. So the eight T's of grateful living um, is what we're covering. We're going into number four today. And so we know there's this the little, little jingle that has been placed together to remind us. I quite like that because it helps us remember the eight different ones, doesn't it? So today we're looking at our next one, which is treasure. In our fundamental beliefs, or in, when we look at our beliefs as an Adventist church, it actually covers there in number 21 on we are God's stewards and it brings up there about our opportunities, time, opportunities, abilities and there it is, possessions. And we are responsible to him for their proper use. We acknowledge God's ownership by faithful service to him and our fellow men and by returning tithes and giving offerings for the proclamation of his gospel and the support and growth of his church. Tithing is something that is all part of the Old Testament times. It's not something that is new and devised um, recently. And we, we've, we've looked at this slide before. A disciple is someone who in every way is becoming more like Jesus. And how did Jesus faithfully manage his treasure? That's the question for us to ponder. But ask yourself, what are you doing? How are you praying to God that you will become more and more like him each and every day in who you are and with what you do? And so here's the great controversy. We've looked at that each time under each different topic. And so the great controversy on treasure is this. God's blueprint is all good gifts, including my income and assets, come from God. Would you agree with that? Everything that we have that is our income and our assets come from God. Satan's counterfeit is this. I work hard for every cent, so I get to choose what to do with it, not God. God's blueprint is all that I am or can be belongs to God. The counterfeit is this. My ability to earn money is to be used to increase my comfort and my lifestyle. God's blueprint is God has entrusted me to care for and grow the material gifts he, gifts he has given me. The counterfeit is this. God's word doesn't give clear advice on where I should return my tithe. And I know there's been phases, phases over the years where there have been lots of discussions as I grew up in the church. I remember in our youth years there was this phase where the church was really struggling in the in the in the area of tithing and as young people they pulled us together to have discussions on this what was it that was what was drawing people to place their tithe elsewhere and so what we'll cover today will remind us of the fact of why tithing is actually important money can very easily become an idol is under God's blueprint, whereas the counterfeit is I can focus all my time and energy on making and spending money so long as I give tithe. God's blueprint is I cannot serve God and money. And then the other one is when I return a faithful 10% tithe and systematic sacrificial offerings, God will bless me guaranteed. And I want to just say there that we don't give tithe 
just to receive the blessing or for the blessing. We become blessed because we give. But it's because God gave and we give back his part to him. The counterfeit is a dollar is a dollar to God, so can't possibly make the 90% go as far or further than the 100%. And they're just some of the ones that have been thought of. We may, we're, I'm sure we're familiar with this passage in Matthew 6, 19, 21, where Jesus says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. How is your heart? How are you allowing God to transform your heart? We cannot serve God and money, it says in, in Matthew 6, 24. No one can serve two man, masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. We cannot serve God and mammon. And further, one of my favourite writers says this, and I'll just read the ones that I've highlighted. He gave, as in God gave his son, all, all that heaven could give for saving the lost. God so loved that he gave. And if we love in his love, we too shall give all. When I was growing up, my, my grandparents were actually living around the corner from our home. I was around 10 at, at the time when we moved to the area just near them. And I, I remember really clearly that my, not only would my grandparents come over a good half an hour before Sabbath would be opening in the evenings and they would sit there singing songs. But the thing is with my grandparents too was that if they could not make it to church, they would always put their tithes and their offerings aside and they would actually give it. Mum would actually walk around, pick it up from them and they would faithfully give their tithes and offerings each week. And I remember watching that and I thought, I thought that's their, their, just, their depth of their faithfulness to God was to me a real um, testimony. It was a real testimony. My mum also brought us up very early um, in our childhood years to um, when we would get a birthday gift, it was, if it was $20, she'll say, now which part is God's portion? And so we would then tithe on our, on our gift that was given to us as well. It was a way of us learning about tithing before we actually started earning income. And I thought that was, um, and, and she did that with all three of us girls. And that's how for myself, I learned in that space early on what um, faithfulness to God is about. And we all have our journey. What is your journey? What was your upbringing? How much have you wandered from that? If you weren't brought up with that, where has your journey taken you to? And how, how are you going in that space? James Y. Ellen's husband wrote, Giving is a trade to be learned just as well as any other trade. My mum often referred to the fact that we don't pay tithe but that we actually give tithe because God gave and everything that we have from him financially is his and so we are just giving giving back his portion to him and um, my mum had a way of correcting people sometimes and um, if they said pay she'll say no no it's give and I thought, it, it embedded in my mind, but sometimes I thought, Mum, just let, let it go. <laughs> but I knew where she was coming from. God gave, and so we are to give. Gratitude comes first, and generosity is the result. Generosity is the child of gratitude. Isn't that a beautiful statement? 
generosity is the child of gratitude. When we are gracious, when we are grateful, we can't help but respond. We can't help but respond. And generosity, where is your heart with generosity in that space? Do you hold tight onto your money that you have or are you generous in that space? God said to Abraham, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you and in you all the families all in the earth will be blessed. It's pretty interesting, isn't it? How it doesn't just end on and I will bless you, but it goes on that those who bless you um, I will bless those who bless you and I'll curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Right there, we see mission. In many ways, if you relate that to our church structure, you could say that in its own way, there is mission because by you being blessed, he's saying others will be blessed by who you are, how you live. And by the blessings God gave to Abraham, so many were blessed. As he says that the way that I bless you, those blessings can be an outflow to others as well. Blessed, there it is. Blessed is to be a blessing. When we are blessed, the natural outflow is that we are to be a blessing to others. Acts 20, 35 says, And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. It's more blessed to give than to receive. And the White says this, He has entrusted men on earth with sufficient means to carry forward his work. And if all do their duty, there will be no lack. In other words, if we all have part to play in this, and, 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 and worldwide, then there will be no lack in that space. Malachi 3 is one of the key passages in the Bible that talks about tithing. And it says here, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven, and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. He will open the floodgates. Have you ever experienced that in your life where God has opened those floodgates in a massive way? I see some heads nodding. He does and he can open those floodgates, not just for you, but as we read earlier, to bless others. When I think of this passage, my mind goes back to also when it starts off, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. In 1995, um, my sister and my mum and I, my, myself, my sister and I and mum attended the general conference session, the worldwide um, convention that happens every five years of Adventists. And we attended it in Utrecht in Holland. And I remember on that last Sabbath there, they introduced a lady out the front. There was like about 20,000 people in the auditorium. And they, um, Pastor John Carter actually got up. He's, he's now an evangelist in, in the States. And he got up and he introduced this lady from Albania. And he shared the story. She was 91, if I remember correctly. She was about 91 at the time when she was, she was, she was there at this convention. And they introduced her on the stage and he said how they had run an evangelistic campaign in Albania and they had also gone, of course, door knocking to, to the homes in the area. And I can't remember if it was he, he himself or whether it was one of the other workers. Anyway, either way, somebody from that team had knocked on this lady's door. And when, they, when she let them into their home, she said, I have been waiting for you. When they shared who they were and the campaign they had and everything, she actually asked them um, whether they tithe. 
To which, of course, the answer was yes. As Adventists, we do tithing. We follow the biblical concept of tithing that was started back even if you read in, in, in Numbers, you do, it says that it was there to, to support their priests in the ministry and the temple in, in the works there. The Levites also did some tithing, but there was a separation between what was, what was um, the tithing of the Levites, but what was actually specific, rela specifically related to the priesthood so that the work could continue. So she asked them this and they said yes. And she went to her bedroom and she came back out with a shoebox and she opened the shoebox and it was full of the Albanian currency in notes. She said, I was reading the Bible and God convicted me that I need to be tithing. She said, but I have never, never heard of an Adventist keeping church, a, 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 a Sabbath keeping church as well that she was convicted of. So I've kept this under my bed. And for two years, every week, she was putting her tithe aside. And she handed this box to Pastor John Carter. She ended up being the very first Seventh-day Adventist person baptized, baptized, baptized Christian who joined the Seventh-day Adventist church in Albania. Today, one of the results of the campaigns and people that were faithful like this lady is actually the current conference president of Sydney, Ad, Sid, the Sydney Conference. The current Seventh-day Adventist Conference president is from Albania. And, and, and that, those tithing and things like that have gone out into the field and there's results from that in the sense of the blessings extended further for souls for God's kingdom. And now he is even in that position of sharing and baptizing others. I remember feeling that was an incredible story when I, when I saw that with my very own eyes and, eyes and heard it. So how is the tithe distributed in our conference? There was a video clip that we're not able to play. So I've actually placed some of the notes here onto, onto the PowerPoint. So for example, for every $100 that we give in tithe, um, $80 stays actually within our conference. Of that $80, the equivalent of $53 goes towards paying for the pastors, evangelists, Bible workers, hospital, and aged care chaplains. There shouldn't be a comma there. So the hospital and aged care chaplains is such. $10 goes for administration costs. $11 goes towards the departmental expenses, like we have the youth department, we have the stewardship department, those who are within the conference um, positions. And then $3 of that $80 goes towards conventions, for example, things like big camps, summer camps for our young people. And then $3 uh, goes towards the education department. So that's out of the $100, the $80 goes, is distributed in that kind of way. The remaining $20 then goes to the Australian Union Conference, okay, based in Melbourne, that oversees all of Australia. And so $8 of that $20 goes for national resources, resource development, um, departmental leaders and major projects all over Australia. $12 goes to the South Pacific Division and out of that $12 there's a breakdown into $10 and into $2. And so $10 goes for the new and developing fields, things like Adventist Media, um, Discipleship, the Health Department. It goes to the Adventist Colleges and Universities like Fulton College at um, at, um, in Fiji, we've got Avondale College here in Australia and now that Mamarafa College, the Aboriginal College in Perth is, is starting up their building, making extra buildings, I'm sure it'd be going into that kind of space there as well um, given that the distribution. It also go goes for grants for major evangelism projects. And then the remaining $2 actually gets sent to the General Conference, Conference for Mission Projects for all over the world. So every division actually has a degree um, of contribution that they give to the whole General Conference. And that's where things like global mission funding, for example, come for things like when we started the church plant out west. 
so that there's extra funding given for kicking off and starting particular new churches, church plants and things like that. And it also goes for dealing um, leadership, um, dealing with the global issues. So that in itself, you know, the whole the hundred dollars, for example, would be distributed in that kind of format. We know that as we give more um, according to our earnings um, from our income, uh, a ten percent of our um, income that um, that that's that 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 means there's a whole lot more in that space too. So faithful tithing of each person has a great impact all over the world. So when we tithe. Um, and I do love this, even when I've given Bible studies, one of the, the, the exciting things that people do find when we share it with them in Bible studies is that in fact our church is a worldwide church supporting one another. Sometimes in other denominations it's very individual for the church and no matter whether it's a small church or a large church, the tithing then goes really largely towards the ministers being paid. So the bigger your church, the more your earnings, the greater mansion you can have or whatever. But the thing is that, um, or, or use it in any other sort of way. But the thing is that in our church, it's all very even, which is be a beautiful thing. And it's very attractive for new people who are studying the Bible of how our church works. And so mission is better together. Mission is better together. But this I say, and this is... Um, oh, uh, continues on into the next power powerpoint but this i say he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully for god loves a cheerful giver and god is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance of it for every good work in abundance for every good work place god first with your money and see how he blesses you and i would add on to there and how he then blesses others as we give to finish off there's a story that um, if you want to have a look at home it's actually a really lovely video clip to have a look at um, and it's by Adventist World Radio and if you go into looking at miracle stories that's where you'll find this but this story is actually comes from Tanzania and it's um, and it's shared by Adventist World Radio that is actually all around the world so it goes into places where people may um, typically and may not be able to read and write um, but also where people listen a lot to the radio and this one is a story of the Maasai cattle herder um, who tested God. A wealthy Maasai tribal leader, so in Tanzania, mentioned, uh, sorry, named Abraham, who was unable to read and write, was overjoyed when he discovered the Adventist World Radio and he listened to the programs every day. And as he listened every day, he was convicted and accepted Jesus into his life. But here's the challenge that he was then set up with. He then heard also a, um, a presentation on tithing. And in, as he listened to that, he asked himself how could he actually tithe his most, most prized possession. He had more than a thousand head of cattle. Now in, terms, in the Maasai culture, their cattle is everything. It's everything to them. It's not only that the cows are a status symbol, but the cattle is their currency and their main source of food. So it's actually their, their currency, their, their way of their money and their main source of food and sustenance. And it's interesting, they say there that nothing is wasted. Even their huts are actually made of cow dung, would you believe it? So they actually show a little hut made out of that. And they actually live in those, but they also tend to move around that where the cattle need to go for their food, that's where they move. So they have a bit of a nomadic lifestyle. So for a Maasai man to give away cattle, it's regarded as being foolish. I'm sure you'd agree with that too. If that's all that they have, and he was considered in his village quite rich having a thousand head of cattle or, or a bit more than that, it, was, it would be considered foolish for him to give away cattle. But 
Like the rich young ruler from the Bible, Abraham was faced with a decision of his life. Would he choose Jesus and the teachings in this space of tithing or would he turn away sorrowful? In this interview, you can see that if you were to watch it, Abraham shares with, with them that even though he was rich with having these thousand cattle, he says that something was missing in his life. Have you ever had moments where you're in your life where you're feeling something is really missing? And that answer so many times, I know for me, has been Jesus and where my connection and, and how I'm responding to his voice and to his leading and him wanting to change me in various spaces. Following an evangelistic series by the St. Davidus Church, Abraham was baptised into Christ. He shared that when he listened to AWR, they spoke about being faithful to God, to trust him, and that 10% belongs to God. He made a commitment, and like Jacob of the Bible, he counted out every tenth cow, every tenth cow, and so a hundred cows or so were designated for God. And all of that, if we equated it to our kind of currency, would be worth about $30,000. That's a lot. About $30,000. People thought he was crazy. That is, until nine months later, they saw Abraham's cows, the, the, nine, the 90 percent that he had left, they saw nine months later that Abraham's cows gave birth to twins and his sheep had triplets, something that is rarely seen. And as other Messiah people viewed the miracles and blessings, God's blessings upon Abraham, they decided to tithe too. And what did they receive? The same kind of impact of having twins from their cows or triplets from their sheep. The more they gave, the more they were the blessed. The more that you and I give, the more we are blessed. And then others are blessed. Due to Abraham's testimony, over 80 Messiah people to date today have actually accepted Jesus into their lives and have been baptised. Incredible story? I believe so. I believe so. How can you be faithful with treasure? The answer is, a faithful steward does what their master would do if he were present. May God bless each one of us as we look at our treasure that has been given to us by God and as we give because God has given. Grateful living leads to cheerful giving. May God bless and guide each one of us in this space is my prayer.